Hi, I'm Sean Rice from the international tour of the Adams Family, and thank you so much for tuning in for my playthrough of Level 7 Escape. Now first, let me explain the basics of your character and your character sheet. Every character starts off with the same basic traits. Two intelligence, two fight, one defense, and two speed. However, you're going to be dealt two skill cards at the beginning of your game. They're going to increase or decrease these skills and kind of make your player more individual. Next there is the fear track. Now fear plays a very very important role in this game. Every player starts off with a fear of three. As you can see if your fear is lowered you become more level-headed and gain intelligence. However your fight also is decreased. However, if your fear rises as high as 5 or 6, you gain some of your fight. Now, if your fear gets as high as 7 or 8, you gain some fight, you gain some speed, but also the aliens will be drawn to you. And that's because the enemies, the well, at least the clone aliens in this game, are drawn to the, um, the pheromones that you secrete when you have adrenaline. So the higher your fear is, the more the aliens are going to be drawn to you, the more they're going to attack you. So what raises your fear? Well, every time you're attacked, your fear goes up by 1 after the attack. Every time you leave a room that doesn't have any lights on, your fear goes up. Every time you go through a vent, your fear goes up. Now here we have threat. While clones are drawn to fear, the guards are actually drawn to threat, and they'll follow around whoever has the highest threat in the game. Each individual scenario will tell you how many threat tokens your character starts off with. How do you gain threat? Well, you can gain threat by entering a room with a weapon if a guard is in that room, by attacking a guard, or by breaking open a door. Threat is also a controlled item in the game. You're going to be given a set number of threat tokens to put in threat pool, and if the last threat is taken, that triggers lockdown, which is not very good. I'll explain that later. Finally, this is your vitality. Now, your vitality refers to how many adrenaline cards you start the game with and the total number of adrenaline cards you can hold in your hand at any one time. Adrenaline cards have a couple of different purposes. First, they act kind of like hit points. Every time you take damage in a fight, you're going to lose some adrenaline cards. If you lose all of your cards, you're knocked unconscious and go to the infirmary, if, uh, and your vitality goes down by one. If your vitality ever gets down to the skull, then you are dead. Second, you can use your adrenaline cards to activate certain things that are on the cards themselves. If you activate the top portion of the card, you'll be able to increase a skill uh, but you'll also have to either add or subtract some fear to your fear level. If you activate the bottom of the card, you'll be able to do a special action, again, either having to increase or decrease your fear. Or at any time, you can also just discard a card to raise or lower your fear by one. Now that your character is all squared away, here's how you play the game. Every time it's your turn, you're going to do three different things. First, if you don't have the maximum number of adrenaline cards that you can hold in your hand, you can draw one card at the top of your turn. Second, you can move and possibly perform form a challenge. Now your movement is dictated by your speed trait, which remember starts off at 2. If there's no enemy in your room, you can move to another tile that's connected to your tile, or explore to place a new tile on the board. Now you can move through a door, or you can move through a vent, but you can only move through a vent if your fear is lower than 7. Once you move through a vent, you have to stop and lose all the rest of your movement points and just stay in the room you ended up in. If you're moving to an unexplored area, simply take a tile from the top of the stack and place it so that all the doors are connected to doors on the existing tiles around it. Each of the tiles are going to contain a number of different symbols. There may be a yellow symbol on there, uh, which are very scenario specific. They'll tell you whether it's a lab, whether there's power in this room, things like that. If a treasure chest appears on the tile, that means there's an item in the room. The treasure chest only works once, so the first time you enter the room, go ahead and grab an item card. Now you can only hold two items at a time, so if you end up having more than that, you have to choose which one you want to drop and just place it on the room where someone can later come and pick it up. If you move into a room that has a cross on it, that means there's medical supplies in the room. If you begin your turn there, you can take two adrenaline cards at the start of your turn instead of drawing just one. The tile may also have an event trigger icon placed on it. It could be a fear icon, a security icon, or a facility icon. When you explore, if you turn over a tile that does have an event trigger icon, you have to stop your movement and trigger that event and lose the rest of your movement points. 
Now, event trigger icons only happen once. That means the very first time you enter the room. You can move into that room again and nothing will happen. However, some of the event trigger icons have a red outline around them. That means that that's going to trigger an event every single time you go into that room. You're also allowed to perform one challenge per turn. It can be before, during, or after your movement. Now, a challenge could be attacking an enemy, bull rushing a number of different enemies, outwitting an enemy, opening a door, or accessing a control panel. If you are on a space with an enemy, you must successfully perform a challenge that will let you leave that space before you can move on. If you fail that challenge, that enemy will automatically attack you. If you choose to attack the enemy, roll a number of die indicated by your fight stat. Then you're going to count up the number of fight icons rolled on that die and compare it to the defense icons on that enemy's placard. If you've rolled equal to or more than their defense, that enemy is stunned and you can lay them on their side right there on the board. If you've rolled double their defense, that enemy is killed and you can take them out and put them back in the reserves. You can also choose to outwit your enemies. Now if there's more than one type of enemy in your room, both soldiers and clones, you only have to outwit whichever one has more. If they're the same, then you just pick. What you're going to do is roll the number of dice indicated by your intelligence icons, uh, count up all the intelligence icons that you rolled on those dice. Now if you have rolled um, the number of enemies plus two, then you've outwitted them. So if you were if one alien in your room and you roll three icons, that's one plus two, then you have outwitted that alien and you can move from the room. If there are multiple enemies in your room and you don't want to outwit, or if you want to move through several rooms that contain enemies all at one sweep, you can do something called a bull rush. Now a bull rush is a strength challenge, so you're going to count up the number of uh, strength icons you have um, and roll that many number of dice. You're going to look at the dice you rolled and count the number of icons that appeared. You're going to look at the enemies in your room, all of them this time. You're going to count them up and add two. If the number that you rolled is greater than the number of enemies in your room plus two, then you have bull rushed your way through that room. Basically you've shoved your way out. If you're moving into another room with enemies, you're going to subtract one from your die roll. So let's say you rolled uh, five strength icons, now you're down to four. You're going to count the number of enemies in that room, add two, and uh, compare it to your dice roll. If you have more than you have again successfully bull rushed through that room and you can, as long as you have the speed to do it, move to the next room. Finally, once you've drawn your cards, you've moved and you've performed your actions, you're going to trigger an event. Here's how that works. You're going to take an event card, you're going to look at the very top left hand corner of the card and it's going to tell you what enemies are spawning that turn. If there's a guard icon on there, you're going to spawn a guard on the nearest security icon to you. If there's an alien clone, you're going to spawn a clone on the nearest fear icon to you. If there's nothing, then you're not going to spawn anything. However, if your fear is a 7 or 8, no matter what you're spawning, even if it's nothing, you're also going to spawn a clone on the nearest vent to you. That is the punishment for having a fear of 7 or 8. After you spawned your enemies, you're going to look at the middle section. Now, if you are triggering an event from an event trigger icon, then you're going to match up the one on the room with the one on the card. It's going to be either facility or fear or security, and you're going to read it aloud and do whatever it says. If you've just ended your movement and you're not being triggered to do something, you'll skip this part of that step. Finally, you're going to look at the columns at the very bottom and find how many players are playing. Characters or players. If you are playing three people in a solo game, you still look at the third column. It's going to tell you which enemies activate that turn. It could show one icon, it could show two icons of the same kind, or it could show one icon of each. No matter what it shows, that is what is activating. Now, when an enemy activates, it does one of three things. If it has been stunned, which means it's lying on its side in the room, and there's no other player character in the room, it will stand up, and that is all it will do. Uh, if it is in a room and there's nothing in the room that it can attack, it will move towards the, if it's a clone, the uh, character that has the highest fear at that moment. If it's a guard, it will move towards the character that has the highest threat at that moment. Now, if you are in a room adjacent to the alien, when you're calculating who has the highest fear or threat, you're going to add one to whatever your fear or threat is because you're adjacent to it. If that still doesn't make you the highest, it will skip you and move on to the next person. However, if you, you're a three, but being next to it makes you a four, it will come into your room because you're closest. If it's in a room with something that can attack, it of course will do that. So what you
you will do is you will then look at the placard and see what its fight icons are. Most of them are three. And you will roll that many dice. If there's more than one enemy of that same type in the room, you will add one extra dice per enemy to that roll. If it is a guard that's attacking you and your threat is three or more, then you'll add an extra dice. If it's a clone that's attacking you and your fear is five or more, you'll add an extra dice. Um, you roll those dice, you count up the number of fight icons that you rolled, subtract the number of defense icons that you have, and that is what your damage is. You lose that many cards. If, that, if you still have cards at the end of that fight, then wonderful, you're still alive. If you discard your last card, that means that you have been knocked out and you go to the infirmary. If you have any items at all when you get knocked out, you will leave those items in the room that you were knocked out in, place your character on the infirmary tile, lose one threat from your card, you're going to reset your fear to three, and move your vitality down by one. If this puts your vitality on the skull and crossbones, then you're dead. If you end up in the infirmary during lockdown, you are dead. If all characters end up in the infirmary at the same time, you are all dead and lose the game. <laughs> uh, if, however, you are allowed to re-enter the game on your next turn, lockdown has not started, you will take your character and place him in the room, any room you want that has a vent. Lockdown. When either A, all of the threat tokens are taken, or B, you've met the lockdown conditions in the scenario, lockdown then begins. Now, the scenario will tell you exactly how many lockdown tokens there are. This is the way it works. Once lockdown begins, at the end of every player's turn, if that player does not escape, he will remove a lockdown token from the pool. Once you go to remove a lockdown token and there are no tokens there, lockdown happens. The game is sealed off, you're stuck there, you die. Simple, right? Maybe not. But you will get the hang of it. And here's a quick playthrough using the first scenario in the game. Okay, so this is the first playthrough. Um, this is the first uh, scenario that I'm going to play through. Uh, called A New Level of Fear. Um, there's a whole story here, um, which basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing, it basically says that you wake up uh, in this underground area, and you don't know where you are, and there's like something in the air that's burning your lungs, and uh, you look down the corridor and you see all these creatures starting to come towards you, and uh, you figure it's time to get out. So that's basically the beginning of the, the thing here. Um, the scenario sets you up with, um, tells you how to set up the game, and tells you what the objective is. Here it is. Somewhere on this level is an elevator. Finding it means escape. Failing re uh, to reach it in the time means you'll be trapped here forever. Um, so it also tells me that my guards versus aliens here. Uh, guards start the scenario with a fear of four. Clones start with a threat of. I'm sorry. Guards start the scenario with a fear of zero, and uh, clones start with a threat of zero. However, if a clone is on a tile with a stunned guard, remove the guard. Then the guard's fear becomes five, and the clone's threat becomes three. So if I can make that happen, then they'll start to fight each other. Um, it also tells me how to set up the room here. Um, all of, it tells me that there's going to be three stacks: one with eight tiles, one with six, and then the remaining tiles are there. How many guards that I can have? Four. My secure number is one before lockdown, two after lockdown. That means I can only have one guard in each room until lockdown happens, and then I can have two guards in the rooms. Uh, clones reserves is six, so I have six possible aliens, uh, and pack limit is one. That means there can only be one alien in a room at any one time. It tells me how many um, threat tokens to put in the threat pool and how many lockdown tokens to put in the lockdown pool. Uh, it also tells me that uh, we're going to use what they call the alien zone rule and peaking. Alien zone rules mean that uh, normally when an alien spawns, you would put them on a tile that has a fear marker on them. But an alien zone means that if uh, there's a tile closer to you that has a vent instead of a fear marker, then you can then you have to put it on the vent tile instead of the fear marker. Um, peaking. Um, means that we're looking for something specific. In this one, it's obviously the elevator, so they have us set aside the elevator tile over here. As you can see, I've got my three stacks, A, B, and C, and then I've got my elevator tile set off to the side. After I get through stack A, then I can, once I start stack B, every time I 
go to explore a new room, I'll roll a die. If I roll two brains, two intelligence icons, then I have successfully peeked and I have found this room. If I haven't, then I can just keep going on. Once I get through all of stack B and get to stack C, every time I peek, if I just roll one brain, one intelligence icon, then I found the elevator and then I can place it on my uh, tiles. Uh, as you can see here, I've got my reserves of aliens and clones set out. That's my threat pool, my lockdown pool, um, my event cards, my adrenaline cards, and just some miscellaneous tokens. I've already gone ahead and set up my character, so um, I dealt them out my skill cards. Uh, this person has Amateur Boxer, which gives them one extra fight, and it also says I can reroll one die for an attack challenge against a guard. Um, and I have Techno Wizard, which gives me one extra brain, one extra intelligence, and it says I can roll an extra die for challenges on a control panel. Um, then I've dealt myself my four cards here, <coughs> which uh, do various different things, and I've got my infirmary set up over here as well. Um, we are set up on the tank farm, which as you can see has some beautiful artwork on it, where we've spilled out. My character is sitting there on the tank farm, ready to go. And so, I think we're good. Um, it has some special rules on how lockdown works and when it starts. When we get to that part, I'll just uh, tell you about it then. <laughs> in order to just get going. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is explore, because I have nowhere to go. I've got two feet that I start off with, so I'm going to start going... So I'll move this over here, give myself room, and I'm going to start going this way. So I take one from the stack, and as you can see here, this is uh, corridor 104A. Um, it does have an icon here, so I'm going to have to stop in this room and have a facility event. I'm going to set it legally so the doors match up um, and move myself in there. Now I'm going to take an event card. I start at the top, nothing spawns because there's nothing there. I look at my facility, it says gain two fear or attempt a three strength challenge. If you fail, discard one adrenaline card for each point by which you failed. So what that means is um, attempt a three strength challenge. I've got to roll three strength icons on the dice using the amount of dice that I have in my pool. To know which, how many I have in my pool, I look at my stats. I've got two, three. So I have three dice I can roll to try to get three strength icons, or I can just gain two fear to start with. I don't really want to do that because my character doesn't gain and lose fear as easily as some other ones. So I'm going to roll my three dice and try to get three strength icons. I have rolled no strength icons. So, uh, if you fail, discard one adrenaline card for each point by which you failed. So I lose three adrenaline cards right away, which leaves me, that's great, with one. We're starting out to a great start. That's somehow, sometimes how this game goes. So I've gotten rid of my three adrenaline cards, which leaves me with just one. Luckily, next turn I will gain a new one. All because I didn't want to gain no more fear. Now I look at the bottom. Um, I'm playing a one-player game, so if there were any on the board, guards would activate and then aliens would. But I have no one on the board, so I just move on. I can now take a new adrenaline card, because, uh... uh I heal one every turn, <laughs> and I will continue to explore. Alright, so this room, as you can see, has a lab marker on it, which means um, it is a laboratory, uh, but we're, it doesn't really matter in this scenario. There's no other markers on it, which means I don't have to stop in the room, I can continue on, and there's no event that happens in there automatically. So I place it down, move him in, and he has one more movement point. He's going to go into the office, which is a dead end. You can see there's only one way in, only one door. There is a vent, however, um, which I'm not going to use. There is also a treasure icon on here. In the first scenario, it tells you not to use any of the item markers. However, if this were any other scenario, I would then draw an item card. But because it's the first scenario, I do not. I have to move in there. And that's the end of that turn. And now I've got a dead end over here, which is great. Now I take another event card, because I've had nothing that spawns this event. I only look at the top and the bottom. I, don't, I skip this portion in the middle. So it tells me an alien will spawn. So like I said before, an aliens are going to spawn um, either on the nearest fear icon or the nearest vent, because of the alien uh, activation rolls. So I'm going to get an alien, and because there's a vent in my room, that is obviously the nearest to me. So I take an alien, number one, you always play them in order, and I put it on the board in the room that I'm in. 
Now I look at number one and it tells me aliens are also going to activate. So that's wonderful, which means since he's in my room, he's going to attack me. So what I do is I look at my alien and this is, tells me how many attack dice he has. So he's going to roll three dice. My fear is only at three currently. So he doesn't get any bonuses. He only gets a bonus if my fear is five or more. And there's only one alien in the room, so he doesn't get any extra bonuses for having more aliens in the room. So he's just going to roll the three dice. Um, if I wanted to, if I had anything that would help me, I could play one of my adrenaline cards, but I don't have anything that would help me, so I'm not going to bother. I'm going to try to keep the ones I have. He rolled, as you can see, three fists, three strengths. One, two, three. So I take that three, and I look at my defense, which is one. I subtract that. Two, I would lose two adrenaline cards. Bump, bump, lost two, which means I'm already knocked out. This is a great way to begin the game. But as you can see, it's probably going to be a quick playthrough. So I lose my two adrenaline cards. I get knocked out, which means I go into the infirmary over here. Very sad news. There I am in the infirmary. <laughs> and um, what happens is my fear, if it had gone up, uh, which it would have from the attack... It technically would be at four, but it resets itself back to three. Um, I lose one vitality. The scenario started me at four vitality, now I'm at three. If I lose one more, then I'm dead for good, and I lose a threat. This does not go back into the threat pool, this just goes off to the side. Um, I keep everything here. If I had any items, I would have dropped them, but I, there are no items in this game, in this scenario. Okay. So that was that. Now I my alien stays on the board, but I get to put myself in any room that has a vent tile in my, the beginning of my next turn, which is now. So I'm going to deal myself three new adrenaline cards that I will start with. And I'm going to put myself in a room with a vent. So I'm going to put myself farthest away possible. I'm going to put myself here. And I start exploring down towards me. All right. So as you can see here, this is um, going to have to stop in there for a security event. But as you can see, it has a red glow around it. That means that this is one of those rooms, every time I come to this room, I'm going to have a security event. It's not just one of those one-time events and then you never do it again. So I move myself in. have to stop. I have my event. Nothing's going to spawn. Um, I read the security event, which says, Attempt a three intelligence challenge. If you fail, gain one threat. If you fail by two or more, every, every other player also gains a threat. Well, there's only me to worry about, so that's okay. So three intelligence challenge. I've got one, two, three brains. So three intelligence. So I can roll three dice. I'm looking for three brains on the dice. I actually definitely did that, as you can see. I got one, two, three, four, so I'm good to go. Now I look at here. Guards would activate twice if there were any guards, but there are none, so I can move on. Next turn. Exploring. Here's one of those rooms that have the cross on it, so if I start my turn next turn here, which I will, um, I can take two adrenaline cards if I, if I need them to um, heal myself up instead of one, but I'm going to have to stop in this room because it has a security tile on it. Move myself in there. New event. Again, nothing spawning. I look at my security event. Attempt a five intelligence challenge. If you fail, put a guard post marker on your tile. If you fail by three or more, also spawn a guard on your tile. Okay, so a guard post um, is a special marker. Once you once it's on the board, um, every time a guard would activate, it's going to spawn a guard from it. Same thing um, if I had a clone nest. Every time a clone would activate, it would spawn a clone from it. So it puts more enemies out on the board. So I, it's definitely something I don't want to happen. Um, and then just looking ahead, the aliens are going to activate twice. Um, but let me do my challenge first. So I've got to get five intelligence icons using my three dice. I have nothing that will up that. Um, Actually, I do. I'm going to explain to you. I've got three cards here because my vitality is three. However, I'm going to um, lose this card, and I'm going to discard it to lower my fear by one. When I do that, my fear becomes two, 
which gives me an extra intelligence icon. So I've got one, two, three, four now that I can use. So four dice to try to get five brains on them, five icons on them. Let's see if I can do it. Ha. Huh. Nope, I've only rolled two. Uh, okay, so I have failed by three or more, so I'm also going to spawn a guard in my tile. So I have to put out a guard post and a guard. I'm not going to grab a guard post because I don't think I will really need them. <laughs> there we go. So it looks like this. It's going to go in this room, so every time the guards activate, a new guard's going to spawn in there. And because I failed by three or more, it tells me I have to also put a guard in the room. So we'll just set him there. Okay, so now my aliens are going to go twice. So this alien is going to start to move. Now, he's always going to move towards the person with the highest fear. Right now, there's only one person on the board with fear, and that's me. He's going to move in the shortest way possible to me. Um, there, since there is a vent in his room, and he can vent the closest he can get to me, um, is actually this room here. So if you see, here's where the vent starts. He's got to be able to make a path that would get him close. Now the reason he can't get into this room, even though it has a vent, is because these vent ducts don't connect up. So it just kind of stops there. So he's got to stop in that room instead. So that was his first move. His second move, of course, is going to be to walk into this room. <laughs> so now he's pretty darn close. Beginning of my new turn, I get to draw an adrenaline card back, so I'm back up to three. Okay, so now that I'm in the room with the guard, if I want to leave the room, I have to um, deal with the guard first, which means I either need to attack him, which is going to gain my threat by one, or I need to outwit him. Um, currently, my stats for outwitting are better because I have that one extra... Uh, intelligence icon. I still have my four because my fear is still um, at two. Uh, n nothing has not happened to change it yet. So I have four icon, uh, four dice to roll. Because there's only one enemy in the room, I'm only outwitting one. I count him one, and I add two to that three. So I need three intelligence icons to be able to outwit him. Now, if I fail this attempt, then I uh, he will automatically attack me. So we're hoping that doesn't happen. I have rolled more than enough. I've got five. I only needed three. So I outwitted him, and I can now move. I do have my two movements yet to go. I'm moving in here uh, <laughs> to the next sick bay, which I've got to set it up so the doors match up. Here we go. And there's a security icon on there, so I've got to stop and have a security event. Guards spawn, of course they do. They're going to spawn in my room because that's the nearest security tile. So I get a new guard in my room. Security event says, each player chooses to either discard two adrenaline cards or gain one threat. Okay, well I've only got three adrenaline cards and there's a guard in my room, so I don't want to die again because if I do, then I'm dead. So I'm going to instead... Uh, decide to gain one threat. So I'm going to take a threat from the threat pool and put it onto my card. Okay. Now guards are going to activate. Okay, here we go. Which means guard one normally would move into my room, but he can't because you can only have one guard in each room. Um, and he's not attracted to the aliens just yet, so he's not even going to move into that room. So he's just going to basically stay here, <laughs> which is nice. Um, guard 2, however, is going to attack me. So he, again, has um, three attack dice, as you can see. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this card here, before he attacks me, to gain one fear to get two extra shields. So I'm going to move my fear up to three. When I get rid of this card, now I'll have two, three shields. He's got three dice to attack me. I rolled three fists, so I'm fine, because three minus three is zero. I don't lose any cards. 
But I do have to raise my fear up by one extra because I was attacked. So now my fear is four. And because I have a guard's post here, normally a guard would spawn there, but he can't because this guard is in the room waiting to come and attack me over here. So because that guard's in there, I can't spawn one because he would put the room over the limit. So that makes me happy as well. <laughs> Beginning of my turn now, I would heal myself back up so I get a new adrenaline card. Again, I've got to either outwit or um, attack this guard. Um, I've lost my intelligence icon, the extra one that I had, because my fear rose by two. If I use this card, then I can gain one fear, which will give me an extra fist, but that will also put me into this mode here, of five or more, which will give me an extra fist even. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five. So I'll have five dice to try to uh, attack this guard with. Now, I only need, because his defense is three, if I get three or more, then he's been knocked down. However, if I get six or more, then he's been killed. So I rolled... I rolled four. One, two, three, four. So he's been knocked out. I'm going to set him on his side. I have to increase my threat by one. So I'm taking one from the threat pool over here. Which leaves one, so once I take that last one, um, then I have one more time until uh, lockdown starts. Um, and normally I would also take an item, um, but because there's no items in this round, then I do not do that. Okay, so I've attacked him, now I can leave. <laughs> Here we are, moving into this room where we'll have a facility event. Move in there. Take my event card. Nothing is going to spawn. My facility event says roll a number of die equal to your speed. Gain four fear minus one for each speed icon you roll. So I want to get speed icons there because otherwise I'm going to start to gain fear. So my speed is two, so I roll two dice. I've rolled two fear icon, uh, two speed icons. So my fear is going to go up by two. One, two. So that puts me at seven. Now, every time something spawns, I'm gonna get an alien near me, but my f um, fight and my speed are both increased. Okay. Aliens are going to activate twice. So this one's coming in here, and then he's coming in here, because he's coming near me. <laughs> okay, my turn. I get a new adrenaline card. I can take a card here, which is going to be another security event. Put it down, walk in the room. I've now depleted stack A, as you can see. So from here on out, I can start to peek and try to find the exit. All right. I'm going to have my event. Nothing is going to spawn. Look at my security event. Attempt a five intelligence challenge. If you fail, put a guard post marker or uh, on your tile. If you fail by three or more, get a guard in your tile. So that could suck. Um, okay, so <laughs> five intelligence challenge. Um, I only have three. I don't have anything that can help me really. So I'm going to, actually I do. I'm going to play this card to lose one fear and gain one brain, which is going to take me out of that zone where uh, aliens are going to start appearing in my room. So it gives me four dice. I rolled, of course, one intelligence icon. So I've failed by three or more, which means I'm getting another guard post, which sucks. And I'm getting another guard in my room. I apparently can't get away from them. However, they're not going to attack because aliens are going to move. So aliens are coming into my room. Or the room next to me. <laughs> okay. Now I heal myself back up. Take my adrenaline card here. Now I've got to deal with this guard before I can do anything else. So again, um, at this point I can attack him. I've got one, two, three, four attack dice. Which is going to gain me another threat. 
Next time I take a threat, then uh, lockdown starts, which is not good. And I've rolled three, I don't know if you can see it, three icons here. So he is knocked out. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> now I can peek. So I'm going to roll one die. If I roll a double brain, then I have found my place. Did not peek, so I'm going to place my next one down. So here we are. Um, again, I'm not going to be drawing an item there, but normally I would. Here we go. Move on in there. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to move on again. I can only peek once per turn. So I'll put my next tile out. There we go. Move on in there. And I'm going to have my security event. I'm going to spawn a guard in my room, of course, which depletes my number of guards. I've used all four of them now. So no more can come out, even at my guard post. Um, my security event, attempt a three intelligence challenge. If you fail, gain one threat. If you fail by two or more, then every other player also gains a threat. Okay, so if I fail, basically, um, the game is going to be over because I would go to take a threat and lockdown would begin. So my intelligence right now is three icons. So I'm taking my three dice. I've rolled one, two, three, four, five, as you can see here. So I'm okay. Um... Next, my aliens are going to go. So this alien is moving closer to me. All right. So again, um, I need to deal with this guard before uh, I do anything. I can't attack him because if I did, then my threat would go up. Um, and that would be bad. So what I need to do is to try to outwit him. So I'm going to lose a fear to gain a brain which gives me one, my three normal ones, so four dice. I've got to roll three icons to try to outwit him. I've rolled five, so he's been outwitted. Now I'm going to try to peek. Nope, did not peek, so I'm putting another security, another tile out. Here we go, facility tile. did not peek, so I'm going to place my next one down. So here we are. Um, again, I'm not going to be drawing an item there, but normally I would. Here we go. Move on in there. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to move on again. I can only peek once per turn. So I'll put my next tile out. Here we go. Move on in there, and I'm going to have my security event. I'm going to spawn a guard in my room, of course, which depletes my number of guards. I've used all four of them now. So no more can come out, even at my guard post. Um, my security event, attempt a three intelligence challenge. If you fail, gain one threat. If you fail by two or more, then every other player also gains a threat. Okay, so if I fail, basically... Um, the game is going to be over because I would go to take a threat and lockdown would begin. So my intelligence right now is three icons. So I'm taking my three dice. I've rolled one, two, three, four, five, as you can see here. So I'm okay. Um, next, my aliens are going to go. So this alien is moving closer to me. All right. So again, um, I need to deal with this guard before uh, I do anything. I can't attack him because if I did, then my threat would go up, um, and that would be bad. So what I need to do is to try to outwit him. So I'm going to lose a fear to gain a brain, which gives me one, my three normal ones, so four dice. I've got to roll three icons to try to outwit him. I've rolled five, so he's been outwitted. Now I'm going to try to peek. Nope, did not peek, so I'm putting another security, another tile out. Here we go, facility tile. It's 
So as you can see, we're going to get an alien. Um, so that alien is going to go to the nearest vent, which is here. And then I've got my facility. Each player chooses to either gain three fear or gain one threat. Again, can't gain a threat. So I've got to gain three fear, which is sad. One, two, three. That puts me at the top of my fear. Um, number eight. <laughs> Gosh. And, uh, oh golly look, aliens are going to activate, and then the guards are going to activate. Awesome. So aliens are activating, which means he's moving closer, he's moving closer. Now guards are going to activate. So, guard one is going to move one space closer to me. Guard two cannot stand up because guard one is in the room. Ha ha. Guard three is going to stand up. And, um, oh, no, no, no. What happens here with this alien in the room is since this guard is stunned, we remove this guard from play, like it said. And, um, and I think that should happen one, two, before, but that's okay. Now, clones have a threat of four, and guards have a fear of th five. So, guards and uh, clones are now going to start attacking each other, which is nice. Um, since clones have a threat of three, uh, and this guard is here, he's got to choose where to go, either to me or to him, because technically um, I have three, which makes it four, he has three, which makes it a four. Um, I'm going to say, just because of the way the game kind of works, that... Uh, he would probably move towards me, so he's coming in the room with me. That's just kind of how the game plays out normally, because he's been following me anyway. Okay. All right, so um, that is that. Now I go to my next turn. Now I've got to deal with the guard yet again after I take my adrenaline card. So I take my adrenaline card. Oh, gosh, okay. Um, I can't take a threat, so I've got to outwit. So my brains are currently three. So I'm rolling three dice. I only rolled two brains. I did not outwit him. Which means he's going to automatically attack me. He rolled two. I have one defense, which means I'm losing one card. And there it goes. Okay. Um, I can't move out of the room because I didn't defeat him, or outwit him, so I have to just have my event in there. Guard spawns, but there's, uh, there's only, there is one guard left. So guard is going to spawn in the nearest security room to me, which is right here. And then I skip this portion, and guards are going to activate, and then aliens are going to activate. Alright, it's not looking good. So guard. One, two stands up. Three can't move towards him, so three's going to come in here. Four is going to attack me. Wow. Wow. Four rolled six fists, as you can see, so I definitely uh, just died. So, um, yeah. Player down. Taken out by the guards. And uh, I did, definitely did not win. Uh dead. But as you can see, level 7 is a really fun game. There's lots of different outcomes that can happen. Um, the more characters you play, the more chances you have to uh, actually get out. It's really hard as a one-person game, but I've, really, I've done it before. Um, like Arkham, though, you can play up to four of the characters by yourself if you're playing alone, or you can choose to do one or however many you want, um, like I did here. Uh, but I definitely recommend going over to and picking it up at your nearest game store or going over to uh, Privateer Press and checking it out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, please tune in next week for Living Out of Suitcases and the week after that for our next Gaming Out of Suitcases. See you soon!